that will come. Today we're gonna go on a journey through time and space into the realm of the microbiota. I'm going to be cultivating entire societies of tiny living creatures and incorporate them into my own system. Nothing short of playing God. Or, to put it another, somewhat less theatrical way, I'm going to be pickling vegetables. Let's start fermenting. <laughs> We're going to start by making a 2% brine. Weigh your pickling vessel and then zero out the scale. Then take the total weight of your vegetables and water and multiply it by 0.02. That's the amount in grams of salt that you're going to need to then dissolve into the water. Now, non-chronologically, let's take a look at some of these vegetables. I put in a bed of dill at the bottom along with some garlic that I treated with a light crushing. Then I vertically poised some pickles along with the requisite pickling spices, notably black peppercorns and coriander seeds and some dill seeds. Then some parsnips and carrots, those no good Lotharios. 30% of a mirepoix, and some radishes, also known as the bonbon of the babushka. Followed by some more dill and garlic. Then pour your brine back into the jar and weigh it down with a ramekin so that none of the vegetables are exposed to air. That would act as an open invitation to bad news bacteria, which would cause your naive little vegetables to go down a path that they wouldn't be able to come back from. Then cover it up with a lid or cloth or something and give it a date so you know how long it's been. After a week you can see that it actually looks remarkably worse. All the color has leached off the radishes and into the brine, making the liquid appear as if someone's big toe might be floating around in there somewhere. Aesthetic superficialities notwithstanding, you can see that the lactobacillus have been busy as indicated by the bubbles. Check out the slice of radish. That's pretty cool, eh? The celery was most impacted by the brine. It came out a bit mushy. I don't know honestly if I can recommend that one in particular, but it was worth a try. I mean, maybe ferment it for just a day or two and see how that goes. Would you look at that? Reminds me of what my brain must have looked like when I used to get pickled every night as an unencumbered young man. There we go, that's better. Just like in the movies. Anyone play Orcarina of Time as a kid? The parsnip took the longest to pickle. After about a week, it still was barely fermented. The carrots were the best ones, definitely. I think if you had to pick one vegetable to pickle, it would be between the radish and the carrot. Here we go, the lesser half of a charcuterie board. But seriously folks, this is how we're going to put these pickled vegetables to good use as a complementary contrast to balance out some savory meat. Here we have a lovely little boneless blade steak that I'm liberally salting on both sides. Then sticking in the fridge for an hour or so until the salt gets absorbed and fully seasons the meat. After about an hour, you can see that the salt has in fact fully absorbed and drawn out some liquid. Pat it dry with a paper towel on both sides. Now, the plan was to make a bunless burger, but because the place where I got this meat didn't have a grinder on site, I'll just have to do my best with my trusty old knife. So in this video, we'll also get to see how I compare with an industrial strength meat grinder. Spoiler, I'm worse. Regardless, just chop it up as thoroughly as you can and then form some ant patties. Hey, they don't look half bad. And remember folks, the worse they look, the more you can market them as authentic. For our counterweight, we're going to make a relish out of our pickled vegetables. 
Now, because I've given them an extra week in the salt bath, the lactobacillus have gotten advanced to the point that they can actually communicate with my very own microbiome. And if I just concentrate, then I might, I might be able to get them to huzzah! Do the work for me. Into the bowl with you, parsnip. Steady. Steady. Excelsior. I think they're getting better. Into the bowl with you, carrot. How about them radishes? Come on. Radish. Come on. Ah, they've lost it. Strain out the brine and, and don't throw it away because you can use this as the basis for other things. If you make your own mustard, for example, as is commonplace in the 21st century, or if you just want to have a shot of a probiotic potion, it's quite nice actually. Bright, briny, not too salty. Now, dump all the chopped vegetables into a bowl and add in a glob of sour cream and, and mix it until incorporated. I forgot to film it, but, but you can add in a clove of grated garlic for a little extra Then heat up some oil until smoking hot and sear your patties until a nice crust forms on both sides. Now because I want it pretty rare in the center, I just get the oil as, as hot as I can so that the meat spends as little time in the pan as possible. Once your meat's all done, drain off some of the excess oil, but keep all those brown bits because we're gonna use them to make our pan sauce. Now this sauce is very easy. Just pour in the same amount of wine that would help you delay those inescapable feelings of existential guilt for about an hour or so. And throw in a few sprigs of thyme to make it taste more like thyme. Once it's reduced some, but still liquidy, remove the thyme and, and keep reducing. See, if we waited longer, the liquid would get thicker and stick to the thyme, thereby wasting the sauce. Once the sauce is just at the point of no return where you can drag your spatula across it and actually see the bottom of the pan, add in a big piece of but whoops, had a bit of an explosion. I carelessly dropped in a big piece of cold butter into the, the hot liquid and uh, hot concentrated red wine went everywhere. <sighs> well. There goes that shirt. Anyway, stir the butter until incorporated and the sauce is thick and luscious and strain out whatever remaining thyme leaves were still in there. Then drizzle that Michelin tire sauce over everything and put some more thyme props on there and some black pepper. All right, everybody, let's try this. Hell yeah. That was good. Even without the grinder, you know, it's chunkier than a burger. I think it makes it fancier. Ladies and gentlemen, what we have here is the perfect contrast. Salty ass meat with a bright and sour fermented pickled veg and sour cream relish. Perfectly complimentary. I mean, this must be the, the, the culinary manifestation of the, of the yin and yang symbol. Well, that's it. I suppose in my travels of pickling vegetables, I've learned a thing or two about the virtue of patience, as well as about the occasional necessity of sacrifice. Goodbye, salmon shirt. I'll always think of you whenever I'm spawning. And as always, do what you love because nobody cares and it doesn't matter.